Okay, this video is to get you going on the blackjack game. Uh, let's see here. First thing I want to point out, this game as opposed to the war game that we made with cards, is that in this game all face cards are worth 10 points. And aces can count as 11. We always start them at 11. And then they can be converted to 1 point if you go over 21. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let me scroll down and just show you. Here's our deck of cards. A little ASCII art. And I'm going to go all the way down to the face cards and show you. So, 10 is worth 10. And let's see here. Notice a jack is now worth 10 points. A queen is worth 10 points. And in the past, when we did our war game, we made jacks worth 11. Our value is 11. Queens were 12. Kings were 13. And aces were 14. But notice these are all 10s now. Uh, jack, queen, king. And then the ace starts off at 11. So we just assign. There's our values. So I just wanted to point that out first so that it's recognized this is a different, uh, our deck of cards is just a bit different, our list of cards. All right, uh, I, I just went online and I looked for a simple math game, blackjack game online, um, and I found this one. I don't know if you guys find that site. It seems to be working here at school. Most of them are blocked because D11 doesn't let us gamble at school, and these are considered gambling games. But uh, anyway, it's a great math game. So I found this site, this Arcadium. And it's working, so I just wanted to, to show you this, even though our game isn't going to be using these graphics, but this is just a good demo to show you how the game works. For those of you that have never played Blackjack, it's good that I just go through a quick demo here. All right, now by default, this little uh, this website sets it up where it just bets $100, uh, $100 chip uh, to start with. So I'm just going to leave the default. I'll hit deal, and I just want to explain the game now. So this is the dealer side. This is the player side. The dealer gives the player two cards, five plus seven, excuse me, five plus two equals seven. So the total for the player right now is seven. The dealer deals themselves one card face up and one card face down so that we can't see the face, the total value. But we do see a nine. So right now they're showing they have a total of nine and it's going to be added to whatever's underneath after we're done. But first the player gets to choose, do they want to hit or stand? And in our game, we're going to have the, the player type in an H for hit or S for stand. Now, the objective of the game is to beat the dealer without going over 21. Now, the rules are that the dealer has to hit right here. Dealer, if the dealer total is less than 17, so 16 or less, they have to hit. That's just the rules of the game and have to take another card. That's what I, When I say the word hit, I mean they have to take another card. And then they're taking a chance of busting. If they go over 21, then they lose. Uh, if the dealer total is 17 or more, then they have to stand it. They don't have a choice. So, looking at our game here, I definitely want to hit because even if I get an ace, which is worth 11, it's not going to make me bust. I'm not going to go over 21. So I'm going to go ahead and hit. Okay, so I got a 10, uh, a jack, which is equal to 10 points. So now I have 17 points. So, figure this out here. 21, what would give me 21? A 4. So only an ace, which would be good. I could change it to a value of one. Ace, two, three, or a four card. So that's only four different cards uh, out of 13 that would make me not bust. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stand. Let's see what the dealer has. Nine plus four, they had 13. And then they had to take, oops. So we tied because they had 17. All right, so I'll deal again. Now, I've got a 10 that's valued at a 10. It's a king as a 10 and a 2, so I have 12. Dealer's showing an ace, so it's, they first started off at 11 points, and they'll change it to 1 point if they bust. So, what should I do? I'll go ahead and hit. Don't worry about that little thing that said insurance. That's more complicated. We're not going to be making our code to be that complicated. We're just doing the very simple version. Now, because the ace is 11, would have made me bust because 11 plus 12 is 20. 23, um, the computer automatically reduced that down to a 1 and changed to 1, so now it's 13. So I'll go ahead and hit 13 plus 9 is 22. Notice I busted. They, the, when we play our game, the dealer won't even flip over their other card. Uh, and so they don't even show. They just go, oh, dealer won that one. So this is why the dealer has the advantage, because if the player busts, you don't even play the dealer cards. Uh, the dealer just automatically wins. Now, if I stand, now the dealer has 12, so they have to take another card. Why did they have to take another card? 
because their total was less than 17 right here. If the dealer total is less than 17, they must hit. If it's under, uh, if it's 17 or higher, they have to stand. They don't get to choose. All right, and then our program will evaluate um, who wins once the dealer has to stand. If the player didn't bust and the dealer didn't bust, and then we have to stand. Let's go down here and I'll show you in the code. Then we do the evaluation, and the evaluation is the last thing in the code right down here. So showing if player total, P total, is greater than dealer total, congratulations, you win. Or else if the dealer total is greater than the player total, the dealer wins, and so forth. And then else, that's a push, it means that's a tie, no one wins. And so that's the code at the end, just evaluating who wins. All right, so you guys, I gave you all of the code for the basic game, but there's no betting involved. So what you're going to have to do is copy all this code here. Oops, not. You're going to copy all this, Control C. You're going to open up your Python, IDLE, and you're going to paste it in a script file. It's a little slow here today. New file, and let's control V, and let's paste it. So that's a lot of code. I'm giving you pretty much the whole working, the entire code for a working game, but there's no betting, and that's what you're going to have to modify. Change this to a betting game. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my line numbers, and give it a save as. Okay, now that it's saved, we're going to go ahead and run it. And show you what it looks like. So I want you guys to run it a few times, and get a hang, get the hang of it, especially if you're new to blackjack. Let's scroll this down or bring this down, shrink it so we can see the bottom of the page. So if you're new to blackjack, you want to play it a little bit, get used to the game. So here's what's going on. The player card gets a four and a king. Remember, a king is worth 10. So it says your total is 14. And then it says the dealer's showing a two. But remember, it doesn't show the other card yet. We're going to wait and see. Uh, would you like to hit or stand? So this is asking the player with 14. So if I hit S, type S, excuse me, and then I hit enter, it says, uh, you stand on 14. Now it's the dealer's turn. The dealer has a two of clubs and a nine of diamonds for a total of 11. The dealer must hit. So I'm going to hit enter to let it show me the next card for the dealer. The dealer got a queen, got a 21. So the dealer wins this one. Type S to stop playing or enter to play again. So I'll press enter and it deals another set of cards. It shuffles the cards and it deals the next next round. Okay, I paused the video there for a second. Um, but I just wanted to point out that in the game, it doesn't let us bet. And that's what we were that's what we're required to do. Notice it just says press enter and it just starts the game off, but there's no betting. So Taking a look at my instruction page here, I said instructions, copy paste the code, run it a few times to get to learn the rules. Then right here, then you will modify the game to allow the player to place a bet. And the program will increase the player chip count, uh, chip total when the player wins, or it'll decrease the chip total when the player loses. See the video to accomplish this. Well, this is the video, so let me get uh, started here. Let's make this change. I go back in. First thing we need to do in the code is find out before we get into this while loop, we would like to give them a chip total. So we're going to say chips equals, I'll just start off with 10. You guys can do more than that if you want, but I'm going to start off with the variable named chip. Uh, actually, I'm going to call it chips, just more lo logical. Uh, chips equals 10. Then once it goes into the while loop where they start playing the game, the cards are shuffled, and here's where they're playing the game, uh, we need to ask them for a bet of some sort. The cards are shuffling, press enter to do, okay, before they press enter to deal the cards, so it has to be before this, but after they shuffle the cards. So, let's do this. I'll hit enter and put it right here, and I'm going to type in bet equals... Input, uh, I forgot to make it an integer. Well, 
How many chips would you like to bet? Let's do it that way. And let's see where we're putting this here. So I, it's ending up on line 349 for me because I've dumped this down one as well. Um, so that should work. Oops, I missed something, didn't I? Take a look at this watch. If I run it F5, I'm going to get an error. You guys get this error a lot. Invalid syntax, and it puts it on this line. And I say, well, there's nothing wrong with this line. It's the line above it. We're missing the closing parenthesis. All right. Uh, now, you know, this isn't complete, though. Every time that it reruns, we want it to tell them what their new chip total is before they bet. So I think we're going to want to add print and... Let's just say chip total is, and then I'll close it, and comma, and have it print the chips on the screen. I think that's going to be the best. You guys can, you know, you can use different logic, do it however you want, but I think it's going to be best if it's right before, so that every time it reruns, it says your chip total is, how many would you like to bet? And that way, it tells them what they have. Now, here's what I want to challenge you guys with. Oops, let me close this little window. Okay, I want to challenge you guys with something. I got you set up here with your chips. Ready? I'm going to hit F5. Let's run it. I want to challenge you guys to try to do the increasing the chip total and decreasing. So, for example, if I bet 5, now watch what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and keep hitting until I lose. Hit. Your new total is 21, but I'm going to hit. Geez, that would be, got lucky there, but your new total is 28. You busted, the dealer wins this one. Type S to stop or enter to keep playing. So I, I'm going to play again, and now look what it says. Cards are shuffling, your chip total is 10. Hey, wait a minute. I just lost, and I bet 5, so I should only have 5 chips left, right? So it's not doing the calculation down here. What I want to challenge you guys on is, See if you can find out where every time the player wins and every time the player loses. If player is right here, elift player total, I'm going to get you started. This is the first spot where it says the player loses because, look, you busted. The dealer wins this one. So what we need to do is chips equals chips minus bet, right? Because we're going to decrease and that's the first spot. Now I want you guys to do the rest of the spots. See if you can find the rest of them. All right, and make it a working game, a working betting game. You're basically just looking for wherever it says the dealer wins this one or you win this one. That's where you're going to be increasing chip count or decreasing chip count. All right, have fun with it.